I just want to throw my opinion out there, I believe LA Noir deserves a sequel. To me, it's a game like no other. Sure, there are other detective games I guess, but none really spring to mind quite like LA Noir. None really pop quite the same, none capture the tone, characters, environment and overall atmosphere so well in such a clear cut design philosophy that at every turn lends itself to its core focuses over commercial compromises. And also, you can fiddle with dead bodies. Take that as you will, however, be careful, Rusty's watching. Released in May of 2011, L.A. Noir is a 1940s dark, gritty detective game developed by Team Bondi, an Australia-based development studio that would close its doors in October of the same year, and published by everybody's favourite Grand Theft Auto V milker, Rockstar Games. This over a decade old title really captures my imagination as it did for many others, and really is the example of what I want from this style of game. In L.A. Noir, you play as Cole Phelps, a World War II veteran who everybody hated. He becomes a cop, serving on the streets of Los Angeles, and we follow him from the regular beat through the ranks as he makes a name for himself, cracking cases and still being hated by more or less everybody to be honest. Cole is obsessively thorough, this wins him just as many friends as it does enemies, but as a result it makes him the perfect vessel for exploring a detective game. The game wraps up an overarching narrative of Cole's personal introspective redemption into an episodic format in which you crack cases from patrol to traffic and homicide to administrative vice and arson. Each desk is neatly divided into its own chapter, in which you may find yourself investigating individual crimes or a series of crimes, depending on what suits the tempo of the story being told. You gather evidence, interview suspects, fiddle with dead bodies, and eventually solve the mystery. Maybe there's a couple of gunfights, fist fights, chases in the mix there as well, and you can also blow it completely and get chewed out by the boss. And it's because of that experience that I believe L.A. Noir is an amazing game. I love it. I loved it when I played it a decade ago. I didn't even understand it back then. Replaying it has been an eye-opener, and I love it even more now. Oh fuck, I just ran over Rusty. The narrative itself of this game isn't something that I necessarily rave about. It's fine, it's good, in fact, it's even great. But it's how it fits these self-contained episodic chapters, individual cases, into an overarching story that make it work so great. I guess what I'm trying to say is... If this was a several season long Netflix show, I'd binge that shit like hardcore pornography, and then feel incredibly empty after it ends. But as far as video games go, where LA Noir excels, I feel, is in its balancing of actual gameplay. Cutscenes are integrated into gameplay thanks to interviews, and how well you fare in these particular segments judges how the course of a case is going to go. Gathering evidence is crucial, it opens up questions you can ask in said interviews, and also gives you grounds to catch out lies. You need to pay attention lest you miss things, and the game won't always hold your hand. Yes, when you find evidence, the soundtrack plays a recognisable chime, but you're left to piece together the evidence when examining a suspect during an interview for yourself, and yes, you can fuck it up and charge the wrong person with murder. Either or works, the story still progresses, failing a case won't stump you, nor will it lead to long-term consequences, but at least you get shouted at by an angry Irishman. You can read the facial expressions and body language of characters to determine if they're telling the truth, hesitating to give you details, or blatantly lying to your face. These facial expressions are pretty realistic, and video game graphics hadn't quite caught up at the time, resulting in something of a creepy, uncanny valley effect, at certain points anyway. But this mostly works well. Sometimes, whether or not somebody is lying is hard to discern, especially if you have trouble reading people. Like, if you're a social reject like me. Other times, it can be hilariously obvious. True to life, some people are better liars than others after all. For example, I've convinced you all my name is Ethan for almost a decade. My name is actually This was thanks to a system called Motion Scan that utilised 32 cameras to accurately capture an actor's facial movements during performance, a system that no other game has ever used either before or since. At least not as far as I'm aware. That is for a sound reason, most of L.A. Noir's budget allegedly went into this motion scan technology. It's also massively inefficient, as one second of motion scan footage equates to around one gigabyte of storage space. So that's a lot of storage, and then in turn a lot to condense down into a game. However, it certainly granted the game an edge with regards to the direction it was taking. 
there is actual action gameplay present too, a third person shooter you'll find yourself using your sidearm pretty often, and if you're smart enough to pop open your police car's boot before laying waste to the criminals, you can use the SHOTGUN OF JUSTICE. I love the Shotgun of Justice. Besides from shooting people, which you can only do in situations where you happen to be shot at, LA Noir has driving, more accurately crashing cars that by today's standards would be considered priceless classics. That was a tax paying citizen, you just bounced off the fucking hood, Bell. Sometimes you even find yourself in high speed chases, in which your car may or may not bunny hop across the street for no reason and land on the roof of another car, whilst your partner, a late 50s hunchback who's never fired his weapon in the line of duty is frantically shooting at the tyres of a fleeing vehicle and missing as you race through the populated streets of downtown LA. All I'll say about LA Noir's driving, or at least my driving when playing LA Noir, is expect to see your partner's car on fire an awful lot. Besides this, you also have on foot chases in which you'll frustratingly run at the same speed as your suspect for a solid 5 minutes until you're prompted to start spamming X and call speeds up to Mach 3. And then of course there's fist fights, in which you beat the ever-loving shit out of people, what else is there to say? If you get hit, your fedora falls off, so don't get hit. And then of course you've got the odd tailing mission here and there. Yeah, these are actually really quite shit. That's it, we're spotted, back off, back off! But they're utilised sparingly, so they don't get tiresome as a result, and there's no way to fully avoid them. You are a detective, after all, following people is part and parcel. Another key gameplay feature is driving off before your partner can get in the car and ditching them across the city. Look, don't judge me, Rusty needs the cardio. I may be missing a few things off here, but LA Noir thrives because it doesn't really rely on all the gameplay features that would be typical of a video game like this. LA Noir uses your engagement instead in what's actually going on in order to control the flow of playing so you don't get lost in a clusterfuck of tomfoolery with the occasional cutscene in which the main protagonist will say a quippy one-liner. You actually need to be involved with the game. While the former works for plenty of games out there, LA Noir leaning into the latter works to its benefit. LA Noir isn't quite an open world game either. It's one of those games that straddles the concept of an open world and the world of linear storytelling, similar to say Mafia 1 or Mafia 2 or Assassin's Creed 1. It's an open world game technically and only technically, with the actual world space functioning as a backdrop rather than a rich environment in which you can get distracted and lost for hours. This works, think it through, for a detective working cases this translates to a more authentic game design, as you're not doing random shit like side quests for 6 hours before returning to do a small sliver of the main story before disappearing off to do the same for another month. Whilst this works for games like Red Dead Redemption and Grand Theft Auto, it would not work for LA Noir. Granted, in practice, the significance of this would actually depend on how you play rather than how the game plays for you, but LA Noir has a point. It wants you to move forward with the linear story because it knows that you need to pay attention if you want the best outcomes, and while you'll never snooky yourself in how the story plays out depending on your performance, thank god, this wouldn't be practical in a more vast, traditional and dare I say rockstar open world experience. That's not to say that the open world is a massive yet empty husk of a world space with nothing going on. It has simple side content, random dispatch calls that come across the radio when driving, any emergency vehicle for example. You can respond to these, but considering how far away a lot of them can be, it's like you're the only cop in the entire city. These mini missions, if you will, are ordinarily short action sequences, but their contents and difficulty can vary. They're all over very quickly. But if you fail, you have to restart the whole thing. You also have landmarks, collectibles and secret cars to keep things interesting, but yeah, for the most part, what goes on in the world will be more immediately relevant to what's already going on in the story, rather than because it's just happening in an attempt to make an alive open world experience. With how the story makes you always interact with something in the world as well, if you're playing the game how it's intended to be played, you'll be immersed in it. LA Noir proves you don't need groundbreaking gameplay to make a great game, and it also proves that you don't need to make a game open world to keep players engaged. It's strange for a game that is technically open world to make this sort of statement, but it does so excellently. There is an entire open world space you can aimlessly drive around if you so wish to, with limited side content but it is there, 
and doesn't require much seeking to find, and will never take you too far away from the main story for too long, besides from those random dispatch calls, Jesus fuck. But I often find you'll come across a lot of this without going out of your way, and therefore the only reason you'll ever have to drive across the map on a whim is stealing Royale's car and using it to run down pedestrians because he's honestly insufferable, and then leaving it on fire in a ditch though this world space certainly sets the tone quite well. From the soundtrack to the time of day and the weather, LA Noir knows how to capture the vibe it wants you to feel in any given moment, and then it will carry that tone over into the theme of whatever crime you're investigating. LA Noir also doesn't hesitate to shock you. Just searching this regular old man's apartment, I wonder what's inside this door. Oh no, he's an aunt. This game also has no trouble throwing a well-needed curveball, providing variety, whether aesthetically, mechanically, or structurally. It works within its core identity's parameters to provide a fresh experience from start to finish. And as a result, there is no point in playing this game where I felt it grow stale, either the first playthrough, 10 years ago, or my second playthrough, which I concluded very recently. Basically, to summarise the point I've been trying to make, LA Noir maintains an experience of variety without compromising its focus. If you asked me what word I think would best describe L.A. Noir, focused would probably be it. Whether by intent or not, this game does an immaculate job of highlighting its best aspects, the aspects you're playing the game for in the first place. And it gradually narrows your focus in on this as the story progresses. At first, L.A. Noir drops you in it. The narrative is loose with flashbacks to Cole's World War II experiences in Japan, but you can't really gather much from it right away. The story slowly comes together and gets more focused as you progress. So at first, you're handling sporadic cases that become increasingly intertwined as you work your way up the ranks, coming into full swing by the homicide desk in which you're on the trail of the Black Dahlia killer as he kills women again and again, dumping their bodies for you to find. Then the majority of the vice cases put you on the trail of a morphine racket, and most arson cases thereafter have you hunting a serial arsonist, which then ties into an intense climax, all the while experiencing flashbacks to World War II in which we can learn more and more about Cole's time in the Marines and how that then connects to the main story. L.A. Noir also has a repertoire of compelling characters. I don't know about you, but I feel more comfortable with the siren on. What do you think? I am in another dimension. Cole Phelps is a stoic war veteran who finds himself obsessing over cases as a cop in a world where this just isn't ordinary. This puts him at odds with almost every partner he's assigned to, but we see these characters, not you, be convinced by Cole's ability. Cole as a character fits the purpose of the game quite well. Above all else, he's a good case man. And then of course you've got your partners. On each desk you're paired with another character. On patrol you've got a man nobody really remembers the name of. On traffic you get paired with Stefan Bukowski. To be fair, he's alright. But on homicide you get paired with the man himself. Rusty Galloway. Perhaps he is a little bit on the complacent side as far as cops go, but nothing brings me greater joy than ditching Rusty halfway across town and then watching him have to run back to the car, only to do it again. Sin a bit, Rusty. Then there's Royale. Royale is a character that you love to hate. He's a dickhead. He's everything typical that was wrong with the 1940s, and a corrupt vice cop on top. Royale is the reprehensible cop, he's the one that makes you realise that maybe climbing the ranks isn't necessarily a good thing. And then on the arson desk we're introduced to our new partner Herschel Biggs. Similar to Rusty, he could benefit from a lick of cardio on occasion, however I never had the gumption to do that to him because despite his hardy and solitary exterior, he's actually kind of a decent fella. Outside of your partners, you have Cole's wife who shows up for 25 seconds of the game to throw Cole out of the house, Cole's children who say nothing, Cole's other love interest Elsa, a German singer who becomes the subject of a couple investigations herself, then there's the lady on the other end of the police telephone and manages to pull off answering in the exact same tone and tempo every time without fail. She's the true hero of LA Noir and deserves way more credit than she gets, and of course, who could forget? Chad Kelso. Jack Kelso is a character that shares Cole's war veteran past, both serving in Japan in World War II. They came to blows often, and it's safe to say that they aren't each other's biggest fans. However, at no point are they actually enemies. Kelso is the only other playable protagonist in this game. 
LA Noire always finds subtle ways to keep it fresh, and when the game change needs to be a little more outwardly drastic, it doesn't hesitate to switch it up, maintaining its detective core, giving us Kelso's differing perspective for some missions really adds to the experience in a way that makes you want to keep playing. LA Noir never feels stale, which is actually incredibly rare for a game to pull off. It's not too short and yet not too long, the perfect length with the perfect variety in what it's trying to do, broken down into cases making it easy to determine when to switch off and start playing again another time so you can pace yourself through the experience. Playing as Kelso towards the end as the game gets more and more linear really adds that breath of fresh air that invigorates you to play the final stretch of the narrative. LA Noir also keeps its tone on track, knowing when to place humour or seriousness. Shooter put him up against the wall and blew his brains out. Hell of a way to go. Doesn't really matter how you go once you're gone. <laughs> Don't get all deep on me, Phelps. I I could go on for hours, construct a massive video essay, but I know that's not my strong suit, so instead I'll cut to the conclusion of my point after. LA Noir is a brilliant, deep, immersive and captivating game. Every second spent playing this is rammed with intrigue, fascinating characters, mystery and suspense. Whether tackling a case on the traffic desk, arson desk or homicide and everything else, this game keeps you interested in a way that is neither restrictive nor too open for its own good. LA Noir presents its world in such a way that just works. Los Angeles is there fully built for you to explore, but the open world is not a focus of the game. There's content to reward you for exploring it to a superficial degree, but the game knows its core isn't that of an open world game and doesn't try to pretend that it is. It doesn't confuse its purpose and in the end you're left with a lengthy yet concise detective game with the perfect historical time period and atmosphere to make it not just totally enthralling, but also unique within this often overlooked genre of video games. LA Noir proves there's potential for detective games, maybe in ways no other game like it does. All of that, for me, is why the fact that this game never received a sequel is an absolute travesty. Before Team Bondi would get the chance to make another game, the company entered liquidation on the 5th of October 2011, only a few short months after the release of an absolute top quality game that is LA Noir. It was far from a flop, having sold 5 million copies since its launch. The team that created this game would therefore not have the chance to produce a successor either. LA Noir, a solitary game, would simply fade into history, releasing a couple of mini DLCs with rumours of burglary desk cut content from the original game being released as DLC too, but eventually Rockstar, the publisher, would confirm that no more DLC was planned and that was that for this game. If the rumour of a burglary desk expansion was true, that's a massive shame as the rumoured partner was voiced by Brandon Keener, also known as Garrus Vakarian from Mass Effect. Hearing his voice in this game threw me off every single time. I couldn't stop hearing everybody's favourite Turian. Was that Garrus? Was that fucking Garrus? Rockstar Games own the publishing rights to LA Noir, releasing a VR version of the game in 2017, along with remastering the game, just so they can questionably change the truth doubt lie system for good cop, bad cop, and accuse. It ruined a brilliant meme. So they could, in theory, make the ultimate decision with regards to whether or not this game could receive the sequel it deserves. Can you imagine what modern graphics, gameplay, and mechanics could bring to the table for such a game as LA Noir? I know what you're probably saying. Microtransactions. But what if it didn't have to be this way? In fairness, that's probably just this reality. And of course, we all know Rockstar better. It's not GTA, so fuck it. In fact, Rockstar wanked themselves off with Grand Theft Auto V and its respective online component being such a mega hit that they even ditched releasing substantial content for Red Dead Online, gave up on making single-player DLCs, and seemingly have no interest in creating nor supporting games without any form of online element, blowing the case for an LA Noir sequel well and truly out of the water. Were this anybody but Rockstar, they'd be missing a huge opportunity. Sadly, Rockstar is the exception. If anybody could afford to say no to amazing ideas, it's those fuckers. With respect, of course, Grand Theft Auto V's success was no fluke. Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2's success was also no fluke. They know how to make quality games, but be it Rockstar Games themselves or Take-Two Interactive, the stench of the money GTA Online rakes in always draws them back to that game first. It's annoying, but it is just business. 
It's a shame, L.A. Noir deserves a sequel. While it never needed one and is perfectly fine as a self-contained experience you move on from, Team Bondi proved how viable a detective game like it is, how thrilling and fascinating it can be, how satisfying reading people's answers to your questions for a change is, how refreshing a game that doesn't even need more than the most basic of third-person shooter gameplay can feel simply because the game wasn't mindless. Nor was it an absurd parody, and it certainly wasn't intending to break the ground at every turn. And if any game could prove that open worlds don't need to be 100 hour plus experiences crammed with vain activities that logically nobody would go out of their way to actually do, it was this one. L.A. Noir simply was what it was intended to be. A game about a detective set in Los Angeles in 1947. A story of a man so ashamed by his actions in the war that he took to fighting crime as a police officer to atone for his cowardice. Somebody we see rise the ranks just to take a fall from grace as a fall guy to cover up corruption and make the ultimate sacrifice for the greater good. This game makes a point to not stray too far from what a detective would do on the job, and it's not because of laziness, but rather focus. And I'm not saying that a sequel wouldn't have that focus, and I'm also not saying that a sequel wouldn't lack that focus, because we don't know. The tragedy comes in when you realise L.A. Noir never got the chance to try. Too many games today, AAA especially, lack any form of focus. Look at some of the longest standing AAA franchises of our day. For example, you've got Halo, Call of Duty, fucking Saints Row now, what the actual shit is this? Anything that Ubisoft has been creating for the past decade. These games have little to no focus and it can barely contain it entry to entry. And some on the other hand have given up altogether. L.A. Noire is a game with the clarity for a sequel, set somewhere else about different characters, a detective in a different city, even at a different point in history, and it'd still retain the core values of what the game has made important. This is why it's a tragedy that L.A. Noire has never been given the chance to prove itself as a longer term franchise. Will L.A. Noire ever see a sequel? I doubt it. Even if it did, with Team Bondi gone, it may not even have the same magic. Regardless of the chances of L.A. Noire receiving a sequel, I know it's unlikely, but it absolutely deserved one. I'd like to think you would have had something more to say about getting shoved in a fridge. Thank you all for watching this video. I really hope that you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, hit subscribe, like, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff. And of course, check out Decades via the link in the description. For those who are unaware, that is my brand new history channel that I'm running with a few friends. And if history is not your thing, don't worry about it. Anyway, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, take care and goodbye.